Before we get into the video, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. It might be a very little thing to do, but it means so much to me. Before we proceed, please note that this is not a tutorial video, it's just an editing process. Which means, in this video, I will only be showing you the steps on how I edit a gacha character. But fear not, I will also be sharing some tips here. First and foremost, I will do the line art. I normally do this by lowering the opacity of the base layer, slightly tracing over it and making some changes. This is clearly shown when I was doing the folds for the sleeves. In this part, I also highly recommend you to use different thickness of line arts. You can also use different brushes for the line art. Now, moving on to the base color. For the base colors, I use different layers for the hair, skin, clothes, and so on. I also use different layers for the pupil and the sclera. Same goes for the teddy bear. Another tip is not to use two vibrant colors for the base color. Now, we're moving on to the skin shading. Generally, for the shading, we will use different blending modes and clipping for this one. Normally, for the skin shading, I start by shading the edges. For the skin shading, normally, I use blending mode multiply for almost everything. Besides, I also use a lot of red airbrush for adding warm tones to the skin. I also add some lines in the cheek to make it look more attractive. Usually, I never really shade lips before, but this time I'll give it a try. Here, I will be adding some tiny shines on the lips. I use blending mode add for this one. Same goes for the other side of the nose. Normally, in my edits, I add a visible color bone to the skin shading. For those of you who wants to know how to shade skin, I have made a video about it. Please go ahead and watch it. Now, moving on to the eye shading. Now, I can understand that shading the eyes is one of the most complex ones when it comes to shading. In anime, there is lots of shading in the eyes, so I can understand that. One of the brush I highly recommend you when it comes to eye shading is the sputtering brush. Because even though your eye shading is simple, with the sputtering brush it will be detailed. Same thing with the skin tutorial, I also have made a tutorial about this. Please go ahead and check it out too. Next up, we have the cloth shading. For me, same thing with the eye, the cloth shading is also complex. It's not very difficult to shade, but it's very time consuming. For cloth shading, I also normally start by shading the edges. But then, after I'm done shading all the edges, I'm going to start using the smudge tool. The smudging part is very time consuming as you can see here. However, there is a very good reason why I use smudge tool for the cloth shading. As you can see here, it forms more folds, which makes the cloth shading a lot more detailed. If you happen to want to change the color of the clothing, you can go to color balance and filter. Now, I will be shading the eyes of the teddy bear. This part is not that hard because you only need the primary highlight on the top and the secondary highlight on the bottom part of the eye. Next, I will be making shadow gradients for the teddy bear. I'll be using the magic wand tool to select some areas of the bear. Here, I will add soft highlights to the teddy bear by using blending mode add. With the teddy bear all shaded, we will move to the last but not least, the hair shading. Now, for my hair shading tutorial, it is one of the most time consuming one here. Because on my hair shading style, it requires me to draw the hair strand by strand. Earlier, I started to shade the edges of the hair. And now, for the second step, I should shade the inner part of the hair. This is so that the colors will be darker in the inside part of the hair. As you can see in this part, I'm slowly starting to make the first layer of the hair strand. In a normal hair shading, I usually do the hair strands twice. The first hair strand I make is with a darker color, but with the second hair strand, I use a lighter color. However, in a detailed hair shading, I will shade the strand twice with an even lighter color. You can see here that I am shading strand by strand for the hair. 
If you're not satisfied with the color, you can always go to filter and change drawing color. For the lighting part of the hair, I will reshade the strands again. This is another time consuming process which is why I speed up the video. Because in real time, this edit took me 4 hours to make. A lot of time is taken especially when I do the hair strands. But for me, the 4 hours is very much worth it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's video. As usual, please subscribe, like, and share this video. It might be a very little thing to you, but it means so much to me. Aside from that, thank you and see you in the next video. Bye-bye!